Hello there and welcome back to the Agostino Zynga show with I, your host Agostino Zynga and this is episode number 785. That is 785 of the Agostino Zynga show with I, your host Agostino Zynga and I hope you're doing well wherever this lovely jubbly podcast may find you. I hope you are doing swimmingly. How am I? All good, all things considered. All good, all things considered. I really, really cannot complain. It's been an interesting, it's been an interesting, it's been an interesting couple of days, hasn't it? It's been a very, very interesting couple of days. Really interesting couple of days. More so for good old bloody Kylian Mbappe, isn't it? Kylian Mbappe finally got his protracted transfer to Real Madrid, confirmed, signed on the dotted line. Fabrizio Romano kind of ruined a surprise, to be completely honest. We all kind of knew this was going to happen a very, very long time ago. But still, regardless, we now have it confirmed directly from Fabrizio and from Real Madrid and from Mbappe himself that he is now going to be a Real Madrid player for the next season. Season. It's a pretty crazy deal. According to Sky Sports, I've got the screen up here. It says Kylian Mbappe cost Paris Saint Germain 166 million pounds in 2018, but leaves on a free transfer after his contract expired. The France captain signs a five year contract to Real Madrid worth 12.8 million per year after tax. The 25 year old receiver signing on bonus of just over 85 million. So he's going to receive 85 million. Imagine that absolutely insane deal in it they've got one of the best deals this century i didn't know he's 25 to be fair he's got so long um to kind of go the only the only thing i'd say as a as a kind of concern a lot of his play centers around his pace and if his pace goes what does he have you know he doesn't seem as tricky or as intelligent or as crafty or as technical as like a Henri. Henry, when his pace left, he could basically drop in and play that number 10 slash Burkamp role. Um, he even did it at Barcelona when his pace was kind of, you know, left him and he could kind of play the role behind the striker and feed passes in. Does Mbappe have that in him? Who knows? But I'm curious to see how it ends up at Roman Madrid because he won't have to do any of that. He won't have to do any of that tracking back. He won't have to do any of that dropping into the space in the number 10 position. He'll have plenty of players in and around him feeding him balls and he'll just have to finish them. They'll pop balls over the, over the top. He'll run onto them. They'll cross. They'll put. They'll put balls through. They'll cross balls into the box, and he'll just finish them. It's going to be a match made in heaven. A match made in absolute heaven. But word of caution: those the Liga defenders, they don't play. When they think they're going to get stripped, they don't like getting embarrassed. The Liga defenders, they don't like getting embarrassed. So if he does decide to strip and embarrass people with his pace, they're going to be going studs up on him. And you know. I hope he doesn't end up like Neymar. Neymar goes to Barcelona and fucking balls out and then he ends up getting some serious, you know, impact injuries and obviously some injuries um, that are just purely unlucky. But he did get absolutely battered and bruised over there in that league. So I'm curious to see how this kind of plays out for him. But man, oh man, oh man. Real Madrid are definitely on another level. Um, just after they secured another Champions League trophy, they go ahead and sign one of the best, if not the best strikers out there at the moment in Kylian Mbappe. And most likely, you know, they guaranteed, what, 20 plus goals a season? now for the next five seasons or whatever it may be maybe they're guaranteed another champions league as well you probably put them odds on favorites maybe odds on favorites to win a league or two so it's going to be a really tall feat for loads of clubs around the world my club included united to try and stop the fucking real madrid machine they are purring they are purring they are absolutely purring on the subject of purring it was actually quite nice to go to the gym today. I'm not going to lie. Um, one of the weird and wonderful things about going to the gym when the weather kind of improves is that one day, a flip of a coin, it could be completely packed. Another day you could go and it could be completely empty because it's so muggy, it's so humid, it's so sweaty and everything in there. And even though the gym I go to is a pretty good one, it's a 24-hour one, you know, pay like a decent amount of money per month for it. I think it's like 35 or something quid per month. Again, it's not a lot, but still, considering what I used to pay before to go to the leisure center, it's like I'm going to a fucking, you know, luxury fucking gym when I pay £30 a month or whatever it may be. But even with their good facilities in a semi-decent location, not near any like, you know, hot spots, whatever it may be, the air conditioning is still pants. You know, United Kingdom isn't a country made for air conditioning. We kind of have what we have. People may do with it. But for the most part, air conditioning just means keeping the doors open. 
that's basically it there is an air conditioning unit in there but it doesn't work that well so parts of the gym especially the ones that i'm in which are a little bit more in the corners and not really near or underneath some of the big air conditioning units they get super muggy and super sweaty and humid so i think a lot of people tend to not go there or try to go there maybe early in the morning when maybe when it's cooler or something so it was quite nice to go today actually just before i record this pod to go and kind of work out because it was basically empty no one was in there so you get a chance to kind of do what you want i stack up the fucking weight plate and stuff because you know even though i'm a little bit of an independent guy and a little bit fearless i do sometimes feel a little bit guilty when i'm stacking up all my plates next to my rack and people are looking for plates and stuff but it's like look i went and looked for them i made the you know the decision to put them all here and be prepared let me bang on my set and keep it going but obviously there's always somebody that comes in oh are you using that are you using that it's like yeah of course i'm using it you cunt that's why i've got it fucking stacked up next to the fucking squat rack isn't it leave me alone but that's been fairly good but i still need to get onto the running um i'll probably do that in the morning um after i finish obviously recording this pod for those of you listening now i'm recording this sometime after 12 on the wednesday and obviously wednesday is my day off as well so i get a chance to kind of do a lot of content throughout the day as well but obviously i'll be uploading this later on so if you are listening to this as your new way to work thank you for checking me out thank you for checking me out moving on to some distressing news unfortunately courtesy of Halsey I am Halsey on her Instagram shared some really really heartbreaking news and just want to extend you know force and prayers and strength to this young lady um kind of out of the blue to be fair um I don't really pay that close attention to Halsey as a person I love her tune, some music I love her songs I listen to her albums but I'm not really following on Instagram or shit so maybe if you are a balls deep Halsey fan you would have noticed this beforehand especially since she's cut her hair short but Halsey has just revealed that she's suffering from I think she's always suffered from lupus but she's also suffering from leukemia a form of cancer unfortunately and um, she's going for treatment now at the moment and I guess she has been for a while now and it's super heartbreaking because she also announces um, the release of a new album that's due to come out and unfortunately the album also has a bit of an eerie title I think the album cover is here on the screen it's called The End and she put this out just the other day actually it says I'm releasing the first song of my fifth album tomorrow on 604 9am before the first single comes i wanted to share this it means a lot to me i love it let's try something different this time and start at the end so this is the album cover um it's a really cool collage it features a spirally question mark and a heart at the bottom and um, where the dots meant to be with her face superimposed in it and then it says the end on film poor vida or something goop I don't know what that says here i can't really see it properly and then it showcases an illustration that might be of Halsey kind of you know um kind of diving backwards and stuff and obviously with the columbia record at the bottom so this was kind of eerie anyway right the title and now we know why she released this title and she put this out because unfortunately she is suffering from lupus and leukemia so i'm going to play the clip here as well where she kind of details her struggles and what she's been going through seriously seriously ah I feel like an old lady. I told myself I'm giving myself two more years to be sick. In 30, I'm having my... Just telling your body to know I'm, where it is. Yeah, I'm 30, I'm having a rebirth, and I'm not going to be sick, and I'm going to look super hot and have lots of energy and I'm just gonna get to redo my 20s and my 30s. So bless her man, Um, if you're not watching the video, she's um, sat down on her couch um, slowly massaging her legs looking very very frail and very pale and in front of her she's got loads of medicine and stuff that she's been taking as well and obviously a strap on her arm where she's probably been having a bunch of injections so um, it sounds like she's surrounded by family I think it sounded like her mum or somebody or maybe an assistant around her and stuff so she's at least in a position where she has the means and obviously a career that can allow her to take time off and obviously the means to be able to afford good health care so hopefully um, you know this comes around and she's able to make a full speedy recovery but it's it's also an amazing feat for her to be compared because I think she just had a kid recently, if I'm not mistaken. She just had a kid recently. Um, she's clearly writing this album or creating this album or had been creating it probably during the process of her being ill and still plans to put it out. Like a pure artist, a pure, pure artist in one of her most toughest moments where you should be probably spending time with your family and chilling out and trying to recover and get well she's also trying to deliver and put some music out for her fans it might be a swan song it might be the big 
beginning of a new chapter we don't know but i would say personally that i extend thoughts and praise to her and just hope she makes a speedy recovery there's another picture of her in an hospital there showing her behind a face mask um in the hospital um i actually play this as well so you can actually hear what she says here i want to i want to actually see what was said here see what today is day one of the treatment screenshot features a text message i think she had or notes it says the end of the fucking world i think she read i think I, I, I best maybe that's when she got diagnosed maybe she's been suffering from it since 2022 in november 30th so well, she's kind of crazy there's a picture of her um recording some music with her head shaved in the studio and then another picture of her um superimposed um clips of her going through treatment and in the hospital in and out the whole time so she's been privately battling this whole thing this whole entire time not really telling anybody what's going on and clearly now she's updated her fans to let them know that hey if you've been wondering why because she's definitely looked different i think as a fan just from the outside in who doesn't really follow on social whenever i see a pop up on my timeline i did notice that she did look a lot skinnier than she's looked before in the past but i just assume she's just you know doing what everyone else does and just trying to get skinny and hot but i guess she'd been silently suffering and going through this horrible horrible illness so you know if, if it was the leukemia is bad enough but then having to go through leukemia and lupus it's fucking crazy so um extending thoughts and feelings out to Horsey. hope she gets better soon and makes a speedy recovery hopefully makes a speedy recovery and yeah she's you know she doesn't need to put this album out she should be spending time with her family and recovering but she's such a consummate artist such a consummate pro that she wants to put this body of work out as well during the time that she's going through such a horrible horrible occasion so you just have to give this girl ratings man what a, what a warrior also while being a young mum like god almighty man what an absolute warrior what an absolute 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 warrior moving on from that one let's talk about some other distressing news courtesy of ra regarding mixes db mixes db was probably another one of those big sites back in the day similar to like white earbuds and maybe like you know old school ra that i was obsessed with when i was first getting into electronic music i was obsessed with mixes at db i used to check that place all the time which is essentially was a database where they would feed all the latest mixes into i don't know how it exactly worked i'm not gonna lie i don't know if people uploaded them directly on there if mixes db pulled them from certain places but all i remember is that when i was in my minimal phase and i was listening to fucking ricardo villa lobos mixes and i can't think of who else maybe it's early seth troxler and all these guys back in the day i would find all those mixes um via mixes db it was literally that the, the archive i'd go and check those out but over the years i have to be honest as well i don't really listen to mixes like that i listen to my own while i record them because i want to make clips and stuff um or i might like watch a i watch live stream dj mixes this is different this is one but yeah this is the thing i'm gonna say i want to just played into it so i don't listen to mixes online rarely but i will listen and play dj mixes on youtube so i'm not listening to them on soundcloud but i listen to them on youtube so if somebody is doing a live stream or they've uploaded just a dj mix like the book club whore mix mag um you know um what you call a dj mag ra's got one boiler room has one all these people have places where you can go and listen to music i would obviously check it out but I'm not really listening to the audio side of things on like a mix cloud or like a sound cloud for the most part. There are exceptions, but for the most part, I don't really do that. So I wonder if that kind of played into it or if it's just like a money thing in terms of hosting the site, the servers. It's just too much. They're just like, you know what? I'd rather just like leave it. So let's check what Mixes DB said here, courtesy of RA. Mixes DB to shut down permanently on June 29th. So it's just around the corner god almighty um this is a popular mixes database mixes db will close for good saturday june 29th according to a post on the website the code is completely outdated and cannot be run on model servers anymore and since ads went to zero um, months ago and donation models failed years ago i decided it's better to shut it down now than later launched in december 2006 mixes db is a user-generated database cataloging dj mixes radio shows charts and podcasts often with detailed trackers yeah by the way that's the other segment of it as well so mixes db the way it works is that obviously it had all the mixes on their radio shows but it also had a breakdown of all the of all the tracks played and i think people kind of it, it was almost like a wikipedia so you could basically add submissions in terms of what the tracks were and for someone like myself that was digging profusely when i was 
super passionate or i'm still i'm super passionate but I, when i was really in the digging thing like i would like that was a weird thing back in the day like, i don't do as much now because i just dig especially but back in the day i'd be listening to mixes to find new songs to play in my sets so i would listen to like everybody and be pulling as many mixes as tunes possible especially if they played out because usually people when they play out usually play their best stuff i find that when people are recording mixes at home you don't usually play your best stuff um usually anyway you want to save it for when people actually see you in real life so i was really scouring the net and trying to find him and when i found mixes db i was like, oh my god this is my lifesaver because i found it all on one place all on one portal and then of course as we're digging you'll find a track on mixes db courtesy of the track list then you go on juno then you go on discogs or wherever to find the fucking tune and then finding that tune then leads you to find other tunes so it's always just like a non-stop chase you ne you're never satisfied there's always more and more and more you want um so it continues here it says these include decade-long sets from legendary clubs like paradise garage amnesia ibiza omen in frankfurt um uh, all these places i think are closed it's with the exception of omen actually um once the site shuts down the entire database won't be accessible anymore hopefully somebody pulls it and archives it i know many of us put in weeks of fn database but this is where we stand download or copy everything you need before june 29th jesus man super super tragic and again like i said i wonder if this is like a a reflection of people's listening habits because like i'm not really the typical raver because you know i'm involved i dj i put on my own events i talk about stuff like here online and stuff and i'm a little bit you know maybe on the older side when it comes to people that go out and stuff but i wonder if the younger generation are doing that also do the young generation listen to mixes like i've never in my entire life by the way listened to a single nts show like i don't even know who plays when they play i don't listen to it i've not listened to a single one. and i have friends who play there who put their mixes online and stuff i might double tap and like like it but i've never listened to a single set or show from them um so i wonder if i'm if i'm if i'm the, the only one that does that or people do listen to actual radio online radio shows or do they just tune into the mix that gets uploaded on youtube you know because that's what i do because that's what i do with my own stuff um i've actually just relaunched actually my own channel and i've done it under the proviso of uh, persistence radio actually so nowadays going forward what i'm going to do with all my dj mixes is i'm gonna have them on my own channel which is persistence radio which is kind of like my faux record label type of thing but i'm gonna host all my live mixes on here so what i'll do most likely i've still got a couple of text mix test mixes to kind of go through on my main channel on my obviously taz channel that you're watching on um, this lovely podcast from or that you kind of probably know me from from all the things i do but then i'll slowly transition to having all my mixes based underneath this label or underneath this banner or this brand of persistence radio and that'll be where i'll put all my mixes now of course what i'm planning to do is also is to upload clips of me playing as well just to kind of spruce up you know the page and make it a bit you know interesting because i think that's something that's lacking as well nowadays people put four mixes up like you know 10 minute you know one hour plus mixes but no one really puts up clips of like blends and stuff people put clips up of blends on social media but not on fucking youtube so i'm going to be doing that as well going forward so if you haven't already checked out my stuff please do um it's at youtube.com forward slash at persistence radio but you can just find out my channel if you go on my channel and click on my channel you'll see it linked as one of the link channels on there but i also put the link in the description for those of you who want to check it out but i do wonder i do wonder if the fact that mixes db is shutting down does that have to do with people's listening habits are people now not listening to audio mixes as much as they used to in the past like what are they doing because i don't know if when i'm pre-gaming when i want to go out i'm a bit weird like sometimes i won't listen to like an electronic music based mix or tune i'd want to go the opposite so if i'm going out somewhere i might play some r&b or just nothing at all you know if that makes any sense so if i'm going to a techno party i want to play some country just something completely opposite to what i'm going to expect to hear there um but i know some people when they're pre-game maybe you want to put on a playlist instead maybe you want to put on the you know maybe an album but you don't actually want to put on an actual dj mix or if you do put on a dj mix you want to watch the person too via youtube so i wonder if that's actually a thing maybe that's actually a thing going forward i'm not really too sure but either way r.i.p mixes db an absolutely legendary platform sad to see it go but of course as the main person said get all your stuff you need from them before june 29th before june 29th moving on we've got some other real good news about mixes this is completely different though because i feel like this is like the best news you're gonna ever ever hear when it comes to flipping mixes and stuff that you should be checking out online so as most of you guys know i'm a little bit of a you know tech dance music techno and club you know 
nightlife kind of fiend i especially love some of the more call up clubs out there in the world and unfortunately i was unable to check out this club called the school which is in amsterdam it's actually in a former school and if you know anything about old you know architecture of like old primary schools from back in the day they usually have like laminated flooring really high ceilings big windows big doors like just a great you know kind of maisonette almost kind of architecture where it's all on one floor loads of big rooms loads of natural light and you can imagine you can only imagine what the sound must have been like in there the sound system once you put a sound system into the school because i remember this one particular time when i went to like a um uh like a like a rave thing type of thing that someone put on like it was an undercover one but they housed it in a former school and i just remember the acoustics and this was somebody that it wasn't even that you know they didn't even invest that much into the sound they just had a couple of active speakers in there but i remember how warm the sound was it was literally bouncing everywhere you could feel the ground it's almost like bouncing as you was on it it just felt amazing i was like oh my god so i can only imagine how cool it must have been to be in the school and have that experience so anyway um the school's shut down now there's another club that's taken over that space called i think tilly tech um they're doing great things over there in the amsterdam scene but obviously the school's got a great history um loads of great people have come through the doors loads of legendary long sets have played there but for the most part most of those are lost to time because unless you were there you will never be able to experience them well the school's actually pulled something out of the bag here by announcing that they've put together an archive amsterdam the school launches a digital archive with over 800 plus dj sets yes you heard that 800 plus dj sets all recorded from the school so people that played there they recorded the sets and they put them all up on fucking uh, this amazing website that catalogs all of the flipping sets if you want to check them out based on year they've got always starting from 2016 the launch all the way until 2024 when it closed and you have a bar here that shows you all the sets played in 2021 obviously that's around the pandemic that's why there was no sets there and i also think it closed during that whole like um council culture thing that happened i think with the bounces or something i forgot what the exact reason was for but you can basically see all the list there and and you can also search for it the normal way too if you want to search for it that way as well but there's a crazy 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 amount of flipping sets here for you to check out just in you know 2024 there's 61 there's there's already 288 already in 2023 so on and so forth so let's read the article courtesy of ra regarding this amazing treasure trove of you know of these moments that have been captured for our listening pleasure Amsterdam the school which closed early this year has launched a vast digital archive compiled in collaboration with Mixcloud archivist um, Stad Star, Stad Star Chef and Music Institute Podium Kunst Height um, Archef Heat Archef spans recordings of more than 800 sets from 2016 to 2024 among the 500 plus sets feature Honey Roxy Moore Speedy J Simo Cell Carista Identified Patient Santi Celeste Terence Dixon Elena Colombi who I know big up Elena Colombi she's fucking amazing really really one of our better DJs here in the UK well she's not really I don't think she's even from I don't think she even lives here anymore to be honest but anyway big up Elena Colombi um, and Ploy translating eight years of our history into an open-ended archive you're invited to re-enter and remember the score through the sound the club wrote on instagram het archef is a time capsule for the present and the future as well as a testimony for the time transcending value of club culture more than anything it's a shared space for simply get lost in the music once more the school closed for good in january exactly eight years after its first opening the final party hit in the um was a four-day marathon with an unannounced lineup browse instagram for the full archive and information so for me i think this is an amazing treasure trove i've long said that i would much prefer if i was to listen to audio mixes the ones i want to listen to are recorded sets from clubs but i also understand clubs not wanting to record the sets because they want people to go to the club nights um it's the same reason why a lot of clubs don't like putting out um set list of when people are going to play or time like or time you know times when they're going to play because they don't want people only to come for the main headliner they want them to come early drink get merry and obviously put some money in the till and obviously keep the lights on in the club i understand but I do think nowadays, considering how hard it is to get people out of their house, considering how difficult it is to sell tickets, considering the dearth, you know, the basically lack of clubs that are available at the moment, you have to give people an incentive to go. And I think if you're willing to let people do live streams to promote club nights, I think also recording even a portion of the set and making that available is amazing, especially with the adjustment or with the inclusion of like an atmospheric mic. Uh, big up my guy, Skinny Macho, former uh, Boiler Room guy. He's the one that kind of put me onto those things. So I remember 
listening or watching a boiler room set and loving the fact that you could pick up some like faint sounds of like the people in the crowd and i remember asking him and he basically said yes an atmospheric mic so i'm assuming with atmospheric with with an atmospheric mic it probably works the reverse of like a regular mic that you do like a mukbang on or whatever or asmr where most likely it picks up faint frequency it it picks it picks up faint frequencies and if you get the gain and the volume right you could basically have that playing in the background so you get that crackle you get that pop it's almost like how people record really good live albums where maybe through just maybe through the microphone that the singer singing through you can kind of pick up the crowd noises and i feel like that kind of adds to it because most likely in my experience anyway to see a dj the best possible way to see them is obviously in person it's almost like a band like that's a, that kind of adds another dimension to it and i feel like people's best sets or the best way to kind of get an idea if you like somebody or don't like somebody is to see them actually play and there's no better example than that than obviously seeing them um, or hearing a fucking set for them recorded so i know a lot of clubs wouldn't want to do it maybe agents would want to do it also or maybe the djs themselves would, wouldn't want to do it because it kind of exposes them they kind of is similar a little bit to like the comedy scene um the stand -up comedy scene that i cover on my random show sometimes a common thing that's said about it is that maybe podcast killed stand up in that it kind of overexposed comedians and in one part an, an extension of that could be as well that the fact that they all record crowd work and they release some of their comedy specials on youtube it sort of takes away from the mystery and it kind of if you're really imagine if you're somebody that you didn't know you were shit for instance and then now you're suddenly putting your sets up on youtube it almost kind of like you know you almost kind of expose yourself by putting your setup on youtube because people don't realize oh shit you're not as good as you fucking look or as maybe the bookings would suggest and maybe there's some teachers out there that are the same maybe there's some teachers out there that are getting away with murder by getting these amazing gigs but they're actually terrible but nobody knows because you have to be at the show to know but they're not big enough people to care and complain about blah 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 i don't know whatever it may be either way this fucking archive is fucking amazing i wish more clubs would do it um i know fold does it to a certain extent I can't think of other clubs that do it but i'd imagine it also costs money it's also another bit of work that someone has to do blah 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 but i honestly do think if you really want to give people an onus and a need to come out um apart from set lists and everything else you want to do interviews and other promo material this is such a free easy layup especially nowadays where you can kind of record sets directly through your phone i think through uh, maybe in the record the record box or maybe there's a pioneer no, i think there's a pioneer app actually where you can plug into your phone and record the sets there are standalone recorders too you can plug in obviously you could use a zoom there's loads of things you could do to kind of record a set and use especially on on like you know high-end fucking mixes and stuff um from all the brands they usually have an output that's separate that you can record on from that doesn't fucking feed out onto the main feed but like i said i think i might actually try as well when i next go to pirate um getting a, maybe if i can't get an atmospheric mic just getting one of my mics and just making sure the gain is like super super low so it can pick up maybe faint hits so you can maybe hear me in the background whistling and going fucking crazy maybe i have to mute it if i'm you know sniffing something but apart from that i think it's fucking incredible um loads of great sets on there there's actually a dixon set on here from i think 2017 that's like seven hours long so if you just search on this list you'll find all the sets that you need so there's dixon here there's actually terence dixon there's obviously dixon from 2017 there's a party he played here in 20 fucking 17 and it features a seven hour set from fucking dixon so you could obviously play that oh you can leave comments too wow amazing all right that's brilliant to see so you can check that out um and but the set i've been listening to that i was playing in the gym was this set courtesy of david vunk somebody that i actually found or discovered via boiler room and those old deck mantle sets man like it's such a piss take that boiler room isn't collaborating with deck mantle anymore because we miss out on a lot of sets from deck mantle now i think they're collaborating now with whore but whore are kind of like you know i don't know what's going on with them i don't know if they're not doing it anymore but they're kind of in and out they're going through that weird cancellation because people discovered that they were you know um maybe you know a little bit too fond of israel um but in general general we miss a lot of the sort of deck mental vibes now that boiler room is gone and one of the great discoveries i had was david vunk and there's this particular set i'm listening to from 2019 um from the 5th of july 2019 david vunk uh, who played that fucking discord and it's an absolute banger i've been playing this so fucking hard actually i think i might actually leave a comment on this actually because this is what legitimately has been one of my favorite 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 so yeah so big up um 
big up flicking the school great to flip and see i recommend you check it out um the website link i'll put the, in the description for you so you can see it yourself but it's an amazing trove of flipping great sets all recorded from the clubs and like i said like if you're like me and you're not a fan of listening to dj sets because they sound a bit boring sometimes i think the best bet is to obviously listen to live streams or watch dj live streams such as the ones that are available on there and the ones that are available on my own channel as well persistence radio over there on youtube and obviously other platforms like boiler room whore and all the other places like book club and shit but another thing to listen to if you can't listen to sets is to listen to live recorded sets in the club because you get the energy the vibe the vive that you would get if you were actually in there yourself so definitely check it out definitely check it out it's an absolute amazing treasure trove of great things to see moving on from that one we have to talk about this actually which i've been surprised at some of the kickback most of it has been obviously from certain subreddits that i frequent but i've been surprised at some of the negative comments regarding this so this is regarding else else is a nightclub in berlin an open air nightclub one of the better open air nightclubs they have there because a lot of them are kind of corny um and a little bit lame especially music wise because they play a lot of tech house edm and just shit that i'm not really into so else is probably the only one that's open air that plays the stuff that you and I would probably like.
general, it's just a nice, airy, fun vibe. I'm not going to lie. It's not too serious. Um, it's not too pretentious. Uh, maybe the crowd is a bit random, but I don't mind it. Honestly, I really don't mind it. I'm surprised that a lot of Berliners seem to have a lot of negative things or have negative feelings around else. Maybe again, maybe it's something to do with being there every day and living there is completely different when you actually experience it during the week. But the times I've been to else, I've always had a fucking good time. Honestly, it's legitimately a fucking vibe. And I remember, especially during the peak of, of the areas the peak times of the pandemic when no one could go anywhere seeing videos of people dancing well weirdly enough seeing people seeing videos of people dancing and else with face masks on and shit kind of made me you know kind of made me feel optimistic about the future i'm not gonna lie because that was the first i think time i saw people clubbing in an actual quote-unquote conventional club um so you know i've got a lot of fun memories of else and what they do i love the booth the design everything about it anyway long story short else released news courtesy of the website regarding a season pass that they're going to be pushing for 2024 obviously this is you'd imagine maybe an indication that maybe business isn't going well or is them trying to offer their customers a different way to kind of interact and enjoy else especially with the berlin summer with it being really hot for a long time and you know why not take advantage of that by getting yourself a pass that allows you to go and visit else as more often as possible because from what i understand again it's not for me because i'm not really an outdoors heat person i usually like it in a cold which is why i tend to go to berlin between the months of like august and fucking Jan february are usually my favorite months maybe let's say like september october to february but most people like to go during the summer because it's fucking gorgeous over there um even though the, the, the streets are covered in graffiti and piss and shit and syringes and whatever it may be it's actually a lovely place to visit in the summer because the summers it's just lovely it's just super warm super hot and most people tend to go to the open air bars they don't really like staying inside of a club i do but most people don't who are normal and well adjusted so else is one of the great places to kind of go you know they've also got cc force obviously the bergheim garden is good and a few other places as well that i'm kind of not remembering anyway long story short else have got a party that they're po posting about which i think is a really good idea so it says here is else your garden are you with us almost every weekend because i'd imagine they are if you live there or if i live there i'd probably be there every weekend then this is for you we are offering you the opportunity to become an else ultra and apply for an else season pass giving you access to all our international events sorry all of our internal events and a solid 50 percent discount on external events that's pretty cool right isn't that pretty cool so you get access to all of the events that they put on their own promotions and you get a 50 percent discount on tickets for external promoters that's pretty sick especially when you see the lineup of the events they have coming up but that's not all our plus one enjoy skip, skip the line privilege too. choose from the three types of season pass that fit your schedule so you have to apply you can't just buy it which is great still it is a, still like a selection process it's still a picking thing to go through but one month pass is 85 euros two month pass is 165 euros and a full season which is from june to september is 285 euros i'm not gonna lie if you think about certain clubs in london fabric being one of them drumshed being another you could pay to go to see you could pay for maybe two events maybe three events for two month pass that they're giving you three events in drumshed three separate raves maybe even on thursday friday and saturday might cost you more than 200 euros especially when you include the tickets the fucking um to put your thing in the cloakroom and the lockers maybe a drink there maybe a burger maybe some drugs that, that would easily easily go over 200 euros and and they're giving you a two-month pass which basically means you get a two-month pass to go to free events in there and 50 percent off which is great because the tickets are else are really fucking cheap i think that's an amazing deal really fun and amazing deal i saw some people suggest the same thing for Bergheim. they would never do that because they've got crazy demand they don't need to offer passes but i think for clubs like else that only really operate in the summer it's nice to maybe get some of that money up front you know to be able to have that money up front it kind of allows you some leeway and it gives you some extra runway and gives you some space and breathing room for the further months like why not do it i think other places actually if i'm not mistaken don't other places in ibiza do the same thing too i'm not sure if i'm right but i think there's season passes in ibiza too which makes complete sense um most of those you know most for, for, for june to september you know most likely it's going to be hot as fuck so why you know what's the point of even trying um to go anywhere else because for the most part 
like I said before, regular people that live in Berlin live people that live in like sunny places tend to stay outdoors. I remember last time I actually went in the summer, might have been like twenty nineteen or something. Everyone was outside. Like everyone will stay outside until it got cold, which might be like eight PM or something or nine PM when it got a bit frisky. Then you go inside, but people would stay outside, literally sitting by the canal, sitting in the park, sitting on the side of the street. I forgot where that area is next to that bridge that everyone goes to, the kind of hipster place where people just sit down on the floor, play music, playing cards, chilling, talking, whatever just staying outside for as long as possible and then going indoors when you had to so else it's probably a sick place to go to because you get all of that and you're already in the club anyway and they've got loads of comfortable seating areas you can sit down at and chill out and shit i fucking love it i'm not gonna lie i really really love it i'm actually even apply even i'm not gonna be there often i think from one month past i might even end up applying myself so if you actually go on the website or on, on instagram you see some pictures of what it actually looks like because i think it's again one of the better designed clubs and maybe a little bit more of an interesting space because it's not just like a black box on the inside as you can see there from the pictures some white walls i love actually how they got some of the speakers installed here on some of the walls on the side here i guess there's a maybe doors to go back to the green room not too sure but the actual main door to go into else is this massive door that has them um, these pink lips on the outside or purple lips i think that's a pretty cool design i'm not too mad at that but then the actual design of the club itself is really up my alley i'm not gonna lie i fucking fucking love it so this is courtesy of the account called heist berlin that shows you some pictures of the interior of else um because i think most likely if i'm not mistaken you're not allowed to take pictures in there so they do cover your camera so you don't really see a lot of the footage inside but these are like official pictures of what it looks like on the inside you've got this amazing tree that kind of roots up right in the middle of the dance floor right that's already unique think about that that's fucking a unique they actually do have a cover actually i didn't know that they actually do have a covering that's like a clear i think it's like a clear sheet so you can obviously see some of the light but it actually is covered i think the main dance floor is kind of covered i guess to cover the electronics and make sure people don't you know they don't get wet up but i think the back space is a bit open if i'm not mistaken but anyway there's a massive there's a massive tree growing right in the middle of the fucking dance floor nice wooden um floor nice warm sound great speakers on either side there i'm not too sure what the brand is but again it looks great there's a balcony that you can stand over yes like i said one half of the of the venue is covered as you can see here by this roof but then the rest of it is exposed and there's crates all over or cargo you know that you can kind of see people are in there or no cargo designs around it um kind of it's kind of like an upscale version or a berlin version of a box park just looks a bit more interesting to be fair balcony seats again nice co nice colors as well with all the fucking cargo bins as well there and another tree so there's two trees there's another tree growing here another tree there plenty of places to sit down and chill and whatever it may be and again one of my favorite venues to go to there's also kind of let me actually check to see what they actually see on google about it and what the reviews are because i've seen people online have a lot of weird things to say about else but legit i actually like it i think it's one of the better places to kind of hang out and just chill at the place i was thinking about where people chill and drink might be this place here lumo lenin's or something whatever there's like a place where everyone goes to sit down i'm sure some of you guys know what i'm talking about um so let me actually see what the reviews are saying what what are the reviews saying here about else so this person here says else is a nice club cute outdoor space nice um inside amazing view and the sunset is perfect location this is six days ago also a good bar however the door policy could be more strict in order to annoy people in order for annoying people who go in your club to try and get guilt man that, that i don't think you can be that strict if you have an open air club you're you're really limited on the amount of time you could be open anyway right you're an open air club this kind of club doesn't thrive in the winter it thrives in the summer that's why it looks fucking phenomenal in the wind in the fucking summers so if that's the case you kind of have to be a little bit more open a little bit more free with people when they come in i'm not sure what that door is that's actually quite a cool little door there i wonder where that goes to so i actually i like the fact that they're a bit more free and loose and they don't they're not as strict with the door policy obviously they still have some door selection but i think because people in berlin are spoiled and they're so used to like extremely strict and really precise and on it door selection when they don't get it all the time they just get annoyed you know what i mean but it's like come on bro like you still get better door selection than we get in london and you've got a club that's open there like this that's open longer than some of our actual legit clubs this place is probably open for longer than our actual legit clubs I, I, I kid you not and it costs way less as well um so i think people need to chill out with that stuff but i understand what they mean because i've seen this complaint before so i think this is the one place that you go to where there's randoms but again what would you rather go to else or go to sissy Foss? you know what i mean i like sissy Foss, a legendary spot but the music policy oof, 
okay this person's terrible experience terrible experience we ordered tickets in advance 25 euros and despite this when we arrived at the party the to, see there we go look at the look at the contrast one person bought tickets which you should never do by the way in berlin you should just go and just try your luck because you know they, they have door selectors so or door pickers and they have security and bouncers who take their job very seriously and dance music there is a very serious and very kind of you know well taken care of division and sector of their industry so if you do buy tickets in advance and you're too slush they will take very good pleasure in telling you to fuck off so you're better off just like trying your luck when you get there if i would i would say anyway um but it's a, anyway the person said terrible experience we ordered tickets in advance in 25 euros and despite this when we arrived at the party the selected to not let us in claiming the place was full even though we saw the other girls had entered and we didn't receive our refund it's a shame that there's such a place exists yeah again that's your fault another person says one of the best dj clubs in the world please correct me if i'm wrong but there are only a few clubs who gather four main stage of crowd for the dancing people on sunday from 3 p.m in the afternoon until the next morning exactly where else can you go during the summers anyway especially in london you can't go that's the thing people in berlin are so spoiled they need to come and sl and have a season quote unquote in london can't have a season in london try and rave at fucking box park shoreditch please i dare you try and rave at fucking you know what's that thing called um uh old what's that thing called village something village whatever underground in fucking shoreditch try and try and rave at fucking whatever else i can't think of at the moment egg or something like that. i dare you come to london and you see how bad things are you guys have things really really great over there um and again if it's not and if you don't like it you could just go anywhere else can you go you could go to um what's the other place called um that's by the river as well that i'm a big fan of um i had one of my best clubbing experiences there actually back in the day i can't remember it now name escapes me but i'll put the fucking picture up on the screen so you can see what i'm talking about anyway it continues on the other hand the main stage is open air it closes at 10 p.m then the party continues inside okay cool so it's two halves so there's an inside of else i didn't know that or, or did they mean the inside is the further i don't really know how it works out but i can't remember from last time i've been there it's been a while inside the music they played was too hard for legs and ears it was a feeling the dj played music purposely the two oh, go home dumb i like the experience it's exotic the drinks are less than 10 euros and the mission is 25 euros exactly exactly imagine going to a place that's that's like that with that great architecture and shit and it's only fucking 25 euros entry like you can't complain about that anyway let's see some of the listings going forward in the future we have a boys noise um night again boys noise kind of fell off from me and i don't know i still like his productions but as a dj i've never really been that interested in him at the slightest we've got this is probably one of the better nights here um cooking and else palms tracks prosuma jennifer loveless like amazing fucking lineup there you got bcc own lineup in there which is an odd one to be honest um but still they're there if you like that kind of thing ross from friends is going to be playing there um dj tennis is going to be playing there soon as well um who else do we have here matrix man big up my guy matrix man he's gonna be playing there soon um saturday june 22nd that would be a fucking sick one um you got a pan pot night that would be cool too by the way i'm not gonna lie i think a pan pot that would be pretty cool to go see them play in that sort of venue um carl craig has been playing there also which is an interesting one there's a carl craig night away in detroit live featuring carl craig dj stingray dj minx um osuku Yu yuki matsu natasha Khan, discreet circuit pretty decent lineup that there's a pornceptual happening actually weird isn't it there's a pornceptual oh that's a fucking good lineup that one a pornceptual on the 29th of june that features sem uh deep in you madagaski old young main rakant slim solidad and my one of my favorites tijana t absolutely incredible honestly this place is fucking sick i don't care what anyone says look at this there's a dj seinfeld's playing as well on on the 30th of june you got sumo click here playing who else you got here you got nastia playing as well soon or no not nastia i think this is another person nastia regal i thought that was the other nastia that i know um intercell night happening as well with bloody mary gen x and alex diner you got he she day wow he she day is all over the place isn't it? they're international now isn't it big up he she day um you got agnia dj sweet 16 i am at tyrick kitia love foxy love foxy is everywhere too by the way big up love foxy i've seen love foxy's name on bare lineups man big up love foxy hustle is real um you got else and key the, yo, yo you got you got freddie k playing on the 10th of august that would be a fucking sick one to see all freddie k's crowd in the sun outdoors like you know that would be crazy everyone wearing black and whatever those kkk fucking i forgot what the name is those fucking um t-shirts everyone likes to wear when they're fans of him jim ruskin's also playing but yeah man like 
this is a fucking sick lineup i'm not gonna lie very 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 cool lineups and cool people playing that i would obviously love to go and check out let's actually see how much is the conceptual one there's an open day and night rave what is the how much do the tickets cost over there else i think they're about 30 euros 25 pounds maybe 30 pounds look at that man to see all these people playing 26 80 euros like come on bro no photos allowed music policy and dance everyone's dancing and they're having a good time going fucking crazy else is fucking sick man i will not have any slander you know pointed towards else's way one of the better places to go to and i can't wait to check it out soon i can't wait to check out else so definitely check out else and definitely check out their season pass i think it's a good initiative and it's a good way to you know help ravers kind of you know spec out their planning or what they want to do and whatever it may be and also to lock in some dates for you yourself as well if you want to go especially during the summer months in berlin what a better way to spend it than to have an else pass over there so big up else big up the blood clot else i cannot complain about them i really really cannot complain when it comes to else i'm a big fan i'm a big 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 else fan number one we got to move on to this one this is some interesting news courtesy of this account on twitter called garment jt garment jt big up garment jt for this interesting bit of news regarding the salili Bembry um crocs polex juniper it's a sneaker that salili Bembry did with crocs um he obviously from all the great work he did with them with the slides and shit he went on to make his own shoe from the ground up a truly original kind of silhouette and shit I kind of reviewed it or spoke about it on the stream or the podcast myself and I wasn't really too fond of it when I first saw them to be completely honest but I did kind of like the fact that he did try to do something interesting and different something very much in line with his sort of like design ethos and his kind of just general style his codes whatever you want to call it it does look like a silly Bembry shoe but it just wasn't something to my liking at all but since i've actually seen the pit the actual shoe in person but but like you know worn i'm kind of warm into them especially in the other colorway so if you go on silly Bembry's instagram account you'll first see another colorway that features the shoe that he put out and the first shoe he put out had a bit more of a green translucent sole this one has like a see-through gum sole and it has like a almost like a tree camo vibe something that he's also kind of synonymous for but the actual pictures here that he has of the actual lookbook where he's got the model wearing a pair of the junipers they look so much better on legitimately so this model and this particular lookbook picture that he has on his post on his instagram page that says juniper sally Bembry, the features this old dude this really cool old dude with a white beard who's sitting down and he's got this great orange um puffer jacket on an under vest and he's wearing he's kind of wearing the similar style that what Salili Bembry wears himself and he kind of is outdoors camping or whatever he's doing um with his fucking four arms and looking like a hindu god and he's got these amazing baggy camo trousers on that he's rolled up with the Salili Bembry kind of you know um what you call it branded socks and the junipers on his feet and so worn the way that he's wearing them he's made them look 10 times better like when they're actually done you know like that like look how good they these look compared to the actual tweet so you see these pictures of them as a product image and what they're selling for now on StockX, they're going for like 500 dollars. so i think all this to say because i'm rambling here is that i guess people saw the vision in these before i did i didn't see the vision i saw these stock pictures and i just wasn't sold on them i was like yeah they didn't look that too great so i didn't really bother about them um i think they actually released the other day so i could have actually gotten a pair but i didn't even try to get them because i didn't really like the way they looked but then when i go on salili Bembry's instagram post and i see this guy wearing them i'm like oh that's what people saw people saw the vision that i didn't see they look so much better on especially worn the way they're worn there with like you know your combat trousers rolled up a three quarter lengths away or three quarters up and stuff nice and baggy they look really fucking cool even just worn down over them actually with cargo pants or big sweats or stuff especially the stuff that i wear um it would definitely wet, look really fucking well with them i'm not gonna lie they look so good in it i wonder if those shoes what are those shoes there those orange boots what are these these outdoor things he's got these outdoor chunky almost like they'd like a it's almost like a duffel or puffer coat at the top and it's got this really soft lining i'm not sure if they're slippers or whatever if they're just like coveralls i'm not too sure overalls for shoes but they look really cool but anyway regardless they've been styled really well and now i see the vision and i wish i kind of wish i kind of got them now i'm not gonna lie they look so much better now styled these fucking junipers 
but the resale the resale on these is fucking wild i'm not too sure what the actual retail was but let's say the retail is like 150 200 allegedly according to StockX and this user screenshot they're they're going for this is like a common size as well a us 10 they're going for um between 400 to 500 dollars fucking wild isn't it wild so proof as well that slady Bembry's design and his touch and his you know appeal tra traverses and transcends models it's not just about the regular crocs that we all know and love him for people love everything this guy does clearly we've got another picture here of some other model wearing them and this time it's, a, it's not cargo it looks like he's this person's wearing like baggy dungarees and look how good they look man especially with that kind of knitwear on this guy with a big white beard obviously he looks really cool but look how good they look look how good they look look at how good they fucking look what people are saying oh look people are complaining about the release right look at this from honestly sneaker releases are terrible and they've never not been terrible i guess maybe they went badly for these junipers um what did the person say here someone complaining in um silly Bembry's comments how is it that i was able to put a pair in my cart then once i moved to shopping it sold out listen i understand the limiting of the shoes to make them exclusive however it's not enjoyable at all we waited for a password for some people never got it then if you didn't think you go to the site without a password you wouldn't know that you needed to you needed one we're still asked out hopefully this is another sale and the password situation is rectified so there was some sort of password issue and then when people got a hold of the password naturally as always happens by the time they went to put a password in that shit already had sold out anyway so you know have they been backdoored was there a glitch did people find it were they sharing the codes on fucking discord and shit who fucking knows but i think nowadays with the way sneaker releases are if you have the money and the means just buy them on resale the, the, as soon as they fucking drop because sometimes you can find bargains so if they did re retail for 200 dollars, at least you could buy them on resale for three or 400 that's the only way to kind of get away with it or maybe just enter a raffle and just kind of hope for the best and kind of don't really look at it or you know whatever too much actively participating in the password all that's just too much for me I don't, I don't have the patience i'd rather just spend a bit extra money and, and and just get them shipped to me when they end up shipping but they do look so good though i see how people are hassled but look at how they, good they look with those blue socks with those cargo oh. yeah people saw the vision i didn't see the vision i trashed these when they first came out i think i was very negative on them to be fair and they look really fucking good like, look at the soles that that almost like fingerprint design I, i'm not sure if it's a fingerprint design or if it's like a topography thing um but whatever it is with that clear sole and the green florentine kind of oh. They look so good. And the guy with this fucking baggy um, dungarees on with the socks showing. Yeah. This is kind of the same way that I was wearing my fucking um, Tom Sachs Mars Yard, actually. Yeah, it's another pair I need to kind of probably repurchase from fucking Shenzhen soon as well. But yeah, what an amazing shoe. Uh, big up, Silly Bembry. He knew what he was doing. I didn't know what I was talking about. And clearly, people have said that they fucking love the shoe because look at the fucking resale price. Look at the resale price. It's absolutely balmy. Absolutely balmy. But again, not to be surprised considering how sick they fucking look. Considering how sick they fucking look moving on from that one moving on from that one we have to talk a little bit about stussy and patter stussy and patter have come together for a collaboration i think this might be the second time or third time i think in recent years that they've kind of collaborated um, unfortunately they missed they missed a really opportune moment to come together and collaborate and change their name for the capsule and have it be pussy imagine how cool that would be especially with the double dots on it as well that would be fucking sick but they'd never do that because you know it's too edgy too out there maybe too vulgar but that would have been pretty sick but regardless cool collab especially from two of the most premier um streetwear brands out there at the moment especially if you're like if you're like if you think supreme's corny which i don't think it is but if you do think supreme's corny and a bit overdone and overexposed maybe the best option underneath that is definitely stussy and pattern like they are still the premier ones they're like the they've been in it 20 plus years and still putting out fucking great shit so courtesy of the stussy website to commemorate their long-standing friendship stussy and patter are back with a collaborative collection for the summer drawing inspiration from their mutual connection to music the range features boxing shorts striped knits and blah 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 stussy patter collection is going to be available at stussy chapter stores and dover street market from friday the 7th of june and to be honest it looks fucking phenomenal 
it looks fucking phenomenal knitwear is fucking great the fucking um muay thai boxing short things are brilliant which is a good tie too because if i'm not mistaken the whole pata crew because they're dutch and from suriname and shit i think a lot of those guys are into like muay thai and mma and shit the kind of same stuff that i'm into and do on the slide by myself without people noticing i'm doing it and i think a lot of them um wear muay thai shorts clearly which is why they do stuff like this so i think that's a good tie-in but the shorts are fucking sick you've got a patter written across the front in this really chunky is that an embroidered yeah i think that might be embroidered they've they really spent some money on these these aren't like screen printed everything's been embroidered so it's a massive patter logo on the front of the crotch you've got these two lions on either side and you've got patter written in red and stussy written in green and then you've also got a stussy worldwide tag a massive white one there these are these pants are so good like this these are really good i might have to try and get a pair see if i can wear them for fucking carnival or something these are really fucking cool and then you've also got a patter sound system t-shirt that looks fucking brilliant with the old school stussy um what you call it silhouette drawings i always fucking liked you got this great jean set Do you know what, actually thinking about it this actually looks like what denim tears tries to do without the over racial connotations like this looks like reggae reggae shit right this looks like black power shit this looks like black your magic shit but it's just done in a cool way you know that's the thing it's just done in a far cooler way um i love the look of this this is again reminding me of like I forgot what TV series it is, but in particular, I'm thinking of at the moment a, a very popular black TV series. I'm thinking of where a girl kind of looked especially like this, but she's wearing this really great knit bucket hat. That's the same sort of knit that's available on the sweat. You've got this amazing, um, almost like a chore jacket, but it's a zip instead, denim. And you've also got matching um, jeans as well that are really baggy with a peace badge emblem there and patter of stone onto it and loads of nice motifs like, oh, so fucking good so fucking good there's actually more detailed pictures of what it actually looks like each product you've got it here cuts to the power website um the stussy zip work jacket and you've also got the big old jean which is a stussy shape jean so that's pretty cool to see look at the model oh the model swagging this shit out fuck yeah now that looks so good with the fucking nike boots wow that suit is so banging the knitwear is fucking brilliant too like oh this is fucking this might be one of the better collaborations of this year and look how many pieces it's like six or seven right fucking hell this might be one of the best ones so far i'm not gonna lie fucking hell 12 pieces and it's already one of the best ones um so the uh, the prices are pretty good too the jean jacket is 200 pounds the jeans are 160 the knitwear that everyone's gonna probably want is 135 the t-shirt is 45 the knit hey, hat is 55 the shorts are 90 like they price it really well they want to actually this is the thing stussy and fucking patter anyway in general do price stuff well which is why you see their fucking patter tracksuits everywhere and you see people wearing stussy everything everywhere because as like you know as premium streetwear goes the stuff is really well priced and obviously good quality a lot of it you can see them people resell a lot of that stuff as well on fucking on vintage as well I see all the time you've got a stussy respect t-shirt you got another one here stussy connection like i'd wear i'd wear i'd wear the entire thing i'd wear fucking everything it's all fucking brilliant really fucking cool one of the better collaborations i've seen in a fucking long time but again i shouldn't be surprised it's two of the big dogs in our fucking industry in terms of streetwear stussy and pat are doing big things so definitely check them out available on the friday in all your local stussy chapters dover street as well as patter.com as well as you can see courtesy of the little time um countdown thing they have there on their site so definitely check it out if you are that way inclined because this stuff is absolutely tough super 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 tough oh yeah and in terms of an update regarding the really sad news that kanye had been sued by a former personal assistant for sexual harassment that kind of caught me off guard the other day and i commented on as a development on that actually Ye has actually released a statement or some sort of explanation courtesy of easy regarding those um that lawsuit and all the allegations in there which look kind of dicey um if you're not familiar with it a young lady um who was a former personal assistant of, of yay who yay had hired from only fans and stuff and told her to quit only fans um because he wanted her to be more godly and then paid her an absorbent amount of money to not do only fans anymore i think it was like a million a year or something stupid like that for her to be basically a glorified trophy personal assistant and allegedly she's 
alleging that during a time working at Yeezy that Ye would send a loads of vulgar text messages and shit and um, he obviously in the end ended up withholding or not following through on payment which is what led to the lawsuit so it's part it's partly sexual harassment but it seems to be more of an issue a dispute on pay which again is something that keeps happening at Yeezy I'm not sure why there's not a dedicated person on payroll just to deal with that sort of shit because it seems like people put up with a lot of shit with Kanye because it's fucking yay he's a fucking genius and people will do anything from clout and association with someone like that so people tend to put up with a lot of shit with him but I think no one will put up with not getting paid so I think if you do piss off people if you if you if you're in a business of harassing people if you're in a business of being a cunt and just being a nightmare and a ball egg to deal with the least you can do is pay people on time and i think because Kanye doesn't pay people on time and all the other stuff he does it just sends people overboard and obviously they go crazy now that's one side of the story the other side of the story could be that Kanye is exactly who the girl described him to be in the in the you know brief bits that we've seen in the report and it's pretty heinous do you know what I mean because he's into some dicey shit he said some wild shit in the fucking thing if you remember what I read out courtesy of TMZ so I'm hoping that not to be the case but regardless there's a statement here courtesy of yay 24 vision on um, Twitter and um, you can find it at yay 24 vision underscore all one word on Twitter if you want to see it yourself but I'm going to read the statement here on screen and see what he has to say for himself and if this provides any explanation or clarification or makes it okay what this person had accused him of doing this person this former personal assistant who we're going to refer to as lauren p because i forgot how to pronounce her surname in response to these baseless allegations so he's coming firing firing from the hip straight away let's see what Ye says here in response to these baseless allegations Ye will be filing a lawsuit against lauren p who actively pursued him sexually to coerce employment and other material benefits then engaged in blackmail and extortion when her advances were rejected so Ye is trying to say that, no, I wasn't trying to fuck. She was trying to fuck me. But because he's a godly man, because he's a faithful man, because he's fucking Kanye fucking West, he did the thing that no man would probably do in that position. And he turned down this massive titted, you know, very hoary looking white woman's advances, um, which is kind of suspicious to see because, you know, the woman, if you see her, she does look like Kanye's type. She basically looks like a she basically looks like Bianca Cesari on steroids so you can understand why he'd be into her and you could definitely believe that he wanted her to quit OnlyFans and commit to Yeezy all this sort of shit I could definitely see that to be the case but that's what he says it continues prior to her termination as an assistant Lauren P stole his cell phone in an attempt to destroy phone records that would contradict her claims all of which have been preserved wow so she has <coughs> in her lawsuit she says she has evidence text messages and other stuff of what Ye said to her but Ye also says he has evidence that shows that she tried to steal her steal his phone or something. what she was terminated for being unqualified demanding unreasonable sums of money including four million annual salary and numerous documented instances of her being left what's that Las lascivious what is less what's the meaning of lascivious lascivious meaning feeling or revealing an overt sexual interest of desire okay i've never heard of that term lascivious or lascivious or i say lascivious 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 however you fucking say that word kanye is using it as a defense fair play fair fucking play let's go back to the statement um during her employment lauren p offered yay sex on his birthday to which he declined <laughs> he declined it like um somebody asking for an autograph no thank you <laughs> not tonight <laughs> um during her employment lauren p offered yay sex on his birthday to which he declined sent yay unsolicited to new mid images sexual and narratives and was seen twerking in the office during business hours so you're not allowed to work twerk in the office <laughs> okay twerking is a form of sexual har harassment <laughs> one on one occasion lauren p boasted how the best moment of her life was when she was being ejaculated on by a soccer player while simultaneously texting her boss okay it's well documented jesus christ the details what kind of reply is this did he write this himself it's well documented how lauren p consistently used sexual coercion in an attempt to demand not only money by natural items but material items sorry namely hermes birkin bags a lamborghini and endless quest of plastic surgery to be honest though you hired her too because of what she looks like so this is a weird thing to fight back with but again i don't know who wrote this but this is a fucking crazy reply um upon having her advances rebuked <laughs> rebuked <laughs> this is definitely yeah, isn't it? <laughs> rebuked 
<laughs> this is some Christian phraseology. Um, Lone P blackmail demands have gone from 60 million last year to 50 million last week. Frivolous filing. Such behavior. Oh, that's what she's trying to get. 50 million. Wow. Such behavior is entirely inconsistent with someone who claims to have been sexually harassed or experienced hostile work environment. It's evident that Lauren P leveraged her association with Ye and his company and her proximity to him to seek material gains, clout and employment through inappropriate means i've never heard the words clout being referred to or being used when trying to reply to a fucking legal filing or a lawsuit clout her initial attempt at a lawsuit for unfulfilled for termination gained no media traction leading her to fabricate um headlines following threats of black man extortion yay isn't the only celebrity targeted by lauren p jay leno is suing her for stealing his chin <laughs> <laughs> that's fucking hilarious okay well it seems like yay's not taking it too seriously so maybe they've got evidence on their side of things regarding what's happened and maybe they can clarify it but judging by this statement this reply um this clap back he doesn't seem to be taking it seriously which is both concerning and maybe comforting because it means that he probably didn't do it who knows who knows i guess we'll have to wait and see but regardless um i hope this is a lesson learned for him um stop hiring fucking sex workers to be your assistants and to do like actual work unless you want to hire them for what they're good at don't hire them just because you want you know eye like you know eye candy and shit and you want people to walk into the office and see some only fans girl in the reception like, just hire people who are qualified for the role and if you are going to hire people who you want to have sex with make that very clear and let them be okay with it you know what i mean don't just spring it on them whilst they're working and shit that's like again not cool but again what do i know what do i know absolutely nothing anyways my friends that has been the agostino zinger show episode number 785 thank you so much for tuning in always a pleasure never a chore to have you guys sit here with me today if you are listening to the audio side of the podcast you know what to do leave me a five star review wherever you're watching this or listening to this especially on apple podcast spotify and stuff please leave me a five star review that'll be greatly appreciated if you're watching this via youtube like the stream down below leave me a comment let me know what you think of the show that'd be also greatly appreciated and all of that malarkey links to the social media of myself can be found in the description as well as links to the stories i'm going to be speaking about we find the description also and to end today's show my tune today will be courtesy of homicide gang courtesy of their new album which just dropped which is what i5 u5 w w e5 i don't know what the fuck that says but regardless of what that says check it out homicide gang spelled h-o-m-i-x-i-d-e um gang who are on opium which is probably Bokai's label they've got a new album they just dropped and i'm going to play my favorite song on the album so far which is side effect featuring little yatty so little yatty on side effect with homicide gang is my true today thank you so much for tuning in take care everybody peace